everyone, I'm Allie with Potomac Beads, and join me as I create this fun spring floral tango necklace using some vintage Lucite beads and a bunch of Potomac picks and fun Czech swirled collections. Remember, if you need any supplies, look below the video and check out the description. Make sure you watch because I'm using a mixed media attaching to regular beading wire as well as fringe in all different ways and having a reversible front. So stay through the whole video to learn lots of tips and tricks. If you need any supplies, click on the description click the links there to get back to our site. Gather everything up and let's get started. For this project, I have a combination of a bunch of six OC beads, a bunch of Potomac picks, which are going to be in short runs, fun colors, a lot of swirls of different shape styles of beads, and some vintage Lucite flowers that we're working with. Working with six OC beads as our core, and then eights and elevens in addition to that for some color pop. This is actually going to be one side of my necklace that's going to be followed up with some uh, check glass here in this pretty kind of foresty mix. And what we're going to do is build the other side to create a Y and we're going to do a drop. I'm going to show you a unique way to do the drop. So the first thing we need to do is build our second side and I'm going to go over exactly how to do so and kind of what materials to do. We are using a fringe base pattern going in and out of the design creating. The first thing I want to do is take a bead that's not part of the project and we're going to create a stop bead. A stop bead is a bead that's eventually going to come off and not be used in the project and it's there literally just to stop the beads from falling off the thread. I'm going to go through that stop bead once, making sure that it's still down there at the end. And then you can go through twice if you want to. I'm going to go through a second time, especially because I will have multiple threads going through my first strand of beads. So what we need to do first is create our core. Our core is going to consist of six O beads. Does it need to be six O's? No, you can do this with eight O's. I would caution a little bit doing it with some 11 O's because it's just gonna get tight when you're going in and adding all of this front fringe. I still have one more addition to the fringe to add and I'll show you that as we create. So to begin, you're just gonna take all of your six O seed beads and you're just gonna pick them up one after another and slide them down onto the piece. They're gonna stop right at that stop bead and you're just creating your first line of beads. All right, so we are gonna start out with our most bold colors. I like to start out with the bold colors because we're just gonna put them into um, little sections and I wanna make sure it's not too bold rather than starting out with kind of my more meek color and it sets the tone for the project. I have here two of my Potomac picks, some uh, disc beads in an orange red swirl and a tiny oval bead which look like little jelly beads. I'm coming out the bottom here of approximately four and a half inches of my beads. And again, these are six O beads, so they have a fairly big hole. And I'm gonna start a pattern. The pattern is gonna be 15, then an eight, then a 15. After that, we are gonna begin with one of our jelly beans here. We're gonna use a gold bead to act as a stop bead at the end of that jelly bead. Go back through that oval red bead. Pull nice and tight for that fringe. Repeat our seed bead pattern. Skip over the first 6O bead and go into the next 6O bead. That is our first fringe. Same thing now, 15, 8, 15. We're gonna do our orange disc. And nothing says you have to do gold at the bottom of everything. We switch it up in our next layer. And I'll kind of go over each layer with you. Then I'm going back through pulling tight, making sure we don't have any extra thread. You'll notice with fringe, sometimes you need to push the beads up, kind of hold that stop bead and pull a little tighter. Add your 15, eight, 15, skip over into the next bead. I'm gonna repeat this the whole length of the project, adding in the red and the orange beads as my drops. That should give me about nine of each of them going in and uh, just doing that same exact one of every other adding those beads. All right, so our next row is going to change it up. We are gonna be using some leaves and some of our uh, lucite flowers. And rather than doing a lot of pink or a lot of purple, they're very strong colors, I'm alternating. So I'm doing a purple 
pink kind of alteration with a little bit of that red leaf in there for a different color pop too. So these are gonna fall into it with three seed beads and then going into our flower. When we're coming out of our flower, the pink ones, I'm gonna add a green bead in the middle. Purple will string right along. Pink ones add, uh, or the red one add a pink. You can kind of change it up however you want. And then three seed beads before the leaf. For this one, I'm going to continue with that same pattern of basically just skipping over a bead. So when you see here, you're going into the next bead, skipping over the bead for the leaf and going into the following one and continuing with that every other pattern. So coming out the last of my beads here after, after using nine of each, and I just have two extra beads there I'm gonna kind of get rid of. I'm gonna go in and do one, two, three beads. Then I'm down here at the bottom of the piece. So at the bottom of the piece, I'm gonna go in and I am going to use my flower here, go up through the lucite flower to the other side. And this one here, I just picked up one of my pink seed beads, go back through the lucite flower. So the stop bead now is not at the bottom of the bead. Well, it's kind of still at the bottom of the bead. From here, add one, two, three more seed beads just like we've been doing, skip over that next bead and sew through the following one. And that'll just kind of hang from the middle. Next is my leaf, one, two, three beads. Then one of my leaves, they have that hole at the top of that swirled leaf. And then one, two, three beads, skip over the next bead, go into the following. So I'm just gonna alternate now all of those different pieces. When you're doing fringe, you wanna also pull it out to make sure that your thread is not caught anywhere as you move on to the next. As this gets fuller and fuller, that is going to be more and more of a risk that your thread will get caught. So just kind of be careful as you're working with it. With my purples, I'm just stringing right through, adding my three beads, one before, one after. I'm really having fun with the pattern. Skipping over the next bead, going in, again, making sure I'm not twisted in any thread, and then on to the next one. So you can see it's starting to fill out now. I'm gonna continue every other with a leaf and a purple lucite flower. All right, we're done with round two and you can see that fun look starting to take place. And we're on to round three. Round three going through, we're coming out at the end here. We are going to start a pattern of yellow flower orange. Let me bring this down a little bit. Yellow flower orange. And we're gonna alternate between the blue and kind of that uh, muted yellow color. This bright yellow adds a ton of pop, which is awesome and great. And the orange adds a pop too as well. And the blue we want just a little bit in our garden, just a couple blue bells there. And I'm gonna start out again with my one and two and three elevens, followed by one of my yellow beads here. Once that yellow bead is there, I'm gonna use a pink bead at the end of the yellow. Love that mix of pink and yellow. Come back up through, just the yellow bead, just like normal. And this time we're going to skip two beads rather than one. So I'm gonna go down into the piece here, skip over two beads and then come out through the next. Then I'm going to go through and pick up here one of my blue beads. Same, three fifteens followed by a blue. And rather than have the blue lay flat, I'm gonna use a pink after the blue as well. Back up through the blue then. And one thing to note that from side to side, I'm using the same color, but not necessarily the exact same flower. I wanna keep this uh, fling of my spring fling kind of fun and easy to use. So over through the next, skip one bead, then sew through the next two beads. So you're still skipping over one, and then you're sewing through two. One, two, three beads. My orange bead, I'm gonna drop in a green one, which I know you'll see a little bit of thread, but it's green thread and it doesn't matter. I should have mentioned I'm using size eight dragon thread for this in the green color. Go back through one, two, and three beads. Skip over one and then sew through the next two. Bring your needle and thread out. And then our pattern is going to be going back and starting that over. So after here, we're going backwards then. We're gonna do a, one of the brownish flowers, then yellow, then back to blue, then orange. So you're going back and forth, adding in that third layer of fringe. Now that the sides are done, it's time to concentrate on kind of the bottom here. And I have the camera pulled way back, not to show my messy mat, 
but you can see my messy bat. But to show the different options that you have when it comes to the center. I was tempted to do one more run through the sides here, adding in some of my beads that I'm gonna run up along the back. You can certainly do that. I have some cut that I will add towards the front. There's a number of different ways that you can do this, so many different ways. What I'm going to suggest is that you pick whatever way you want that's best to you. You can go ahead and just connect this in the middle. In that case, I would flip it so that way your garden just kind of keeps going and it's different directions. I'm going to go in and I'm going to use my bigger lucite flowers. And I'm going to use two colors of lucite, kind of making it almost interchangeable. The way that I'm going to connect this is with loops. In the loops, we're going to add a little bit of fringe, and then we're going to have fringe coming out basically between them at the bottom. So we're kind of securing them together. When you're coming out the bottom here, I've taken off my stop bead and just tied my thread. And what I'm going to do is add one, two green beads, and then I'm going to add a series of my gold beads to my thread and needle. These need to be a fairly significant amount of them because they have to get the whole way around both of my lucite flowers. We're going to be linking them to both sides. So I've got my two green, and we'll come up and we'll decorate this a little bit. And I'm going to look kind of measurement wise. Is this gonna make it through? Through one, we'll test it out. We're gonna sew through both, after those 11 O's, we're gonna sew through both lucite flowers and see how that grouping looks. Pretty good. Now we're gonna add gold beads here and go back through the opposite side. So I'm gonna bring the camera in a little bit to show you more of what I'm talking about. We have our gold beads here at the bottom. And then I'm going into my purple or pink. It doesn't matter which one is first. I have no beads in between and I have my purple beads to the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 gold beads will get added to this side as well. So I'm gonna pour out my gold beads here and add 15 to this side. Once you have those 15 on, we're gonna go back up through our green beads. And I wanna make sure this sits correctly and not too tight. So we might need to add a couple extra seed beads going back through those first two green beads that we just added. And that's good. See how it's secure, but it still has room to move around? It's basically a big loop. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. And right here where I'm coming back through, I'm gonna add a little bit of fringe. So decide kind of which color you want to be there and which you think is missing. You can kind of do the purple versus the blue. I think I'm gonna actually put one of my um, bright pink flowers right there. So I'm gonna do my normal one, two, three beads, go through my bright pink flower there, add three more beads, and then come back down through that first bead and reinforce. I'm gonna do this on both sides of my piece. I'm back up through, see how just a little bit of fringe gets added. Make sure you don't see a lot of extra thread on the piece. Go back through all of your seed beads here, link back through, and my starter thread there, I'm gonna do one more piece of fringe and then tie off the starter thread. Same thing with the other side, connecting to the middle, so you'll have two strands connecting to the middle, just like this, kind of sharing that space. The seed bead on both sides, the 11 before the flower of each side, so the 11 right there, the 11 right here, you're gonna share those. So when you come through and do the loop on the other side, add your two eight or six O seed beads, followed by 14 of your 11 O's. So through that 15th bead right there, through the middle, through the 15th bead on the other side, 14 more beads, and do the exact same center. So once you have your fringe or your flowers connected there in the middle, you can see that once you pick it up, it is flippable. So do you want the purple side showing on the pink side showing? Up to you. Now, when I got rid of my thread on both sides, I just tied knots and got rid of it. You won't see it in the collection, which is great. 
From here, we're gonna go in and we're gonna create some fringe. So how are we gonna create the fringe? We're gonna take advantage of the flowers right there being next to one another. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a loop. So we have some of our seed beads around here. It doesn't really matter what the loop is. And I'm going to create it with some 11, or with some eight OC beads to start. And I meant a new piece of thread, or really the thread that I cut off, or burned off. And I'm just picking up, kind of clearing off my mat, some of my pink beads sitting around. And what we are going to do is we are going to take this thread, kind of holding onto it, tucking through those two loops around to the back of the flowers putting that loop of seed beads between the flowers here. See, it's hard to see a little bit in there. And we are going to tie that loop. Now, when I tie that loop, I wanna tie it so I have extra thread on the side because what I'm gonna do is use both sides to create my fringe. So that's tied now, now we get to have fun. So coming off of the center here, whether or not, so you can see that seed bead loop in the middle, whether or not you want gold, silver, no rhyme or reason beads, you can put these all to the center, right there coming down through. You can make this as long as you want, as short as you want, add some beads in there. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna say, all right, what do I have on my mat? I have one of my orange beads. I have one of my yellow beads I'm gonna get out because I want some of that yellow color at the bottom. I am gonna use some of the beads that are in my um, my beads at the back. I'll use one of those flower drops. I'll do a purple. I might even do one of the green ones, which I haven't used in my piece here. And we're basically going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to make my fringe just a little bit longer using some of my six O's here. You can see I did 11 sixes because it's going to be hidden, so it doesn't matter and decide what you want to be at the bottom of the drop and how long you want that drop to be. So right now I'm at the bottom. That's about as long as I want my Y necklace, maybe two more. And I think I really am embracing the pink color. So I'm gonna go into my Lucite flower collection here, grab one of those bright pink ones. I'm gonna grab an 11 OC bead before, actually let's do two 11 OC beads before, come down through that. Then coming out of the flower, let's do a little bit of something to dangle. One, two, three, four beads. Another one of my 60 seed beads. Another 11. Back up through the flower, through the seed beads. In there. Wiggle your needle through if you need to. Come on out the other side. Pull nice and tight, that's our first drop. So that's as long as the piece will be. Now we get to have fun with that fringe. One, two beads, and I'm gonna go back up through that 6OC bead. What do I want my next fringe drop to be? One, two, three of the, actually let's do back to our pattern, get some eights here. This is where, again, you get to kind of have fun with it. So I'll go in here and do one, two, one, back to my original pattern add one of my yellow beads, gold to the bottom, back up through, add that C bead collection, one, one, one. I'm gonna go back up through that bottom bead again and then back out through the top. And that's gonna hang off to the side there. From here, I'm gonna add another bead. One, two, three golds. Let's add one of my blue ones to hang. So I'm gonna use actually four golds, go through the blue. I'm going to add one, two, three beads, three gold, three pink. Come on out through the bottom there. We'll do one more pink and then back up through that row. So you can see it's like really fun to just go in and create and make the bottom exactly what you want Come on through here. I'll pick up some of the pink beads coming out the top. And then I will go back up through those bottom beads one more time. 
And then I'm going to progress to my next bead. So I'm going to go up through two beads. And then what else do you want to add to your drop here? Let's get one of my orange beads and I'll do a red bead. So we're having fun just continuing the same fringe. You can go up and down the piece. Need a little bit of my red bead here and really have fun creating. Need to get one of these check beads in there. It's gonna go up and down and load up those seed beads with a nice fun creation. All right, so this one is hard to get into frame because it is long and fun. So you can see I had a great time here adding that fringe to the bottom. Took that second strand of thread, dropped it down and added some more fringe and thread. You can see I need to burn off the thread ends there. And I did leave that little section above the gold a little bit empty. Once again, it's one side or two. So do you want the pink or the uh, purple side showing. Obviously you're getting both colors, but I thought it would be fun to make it kind of reversible. Now on to the sides. So I don't want it to be too complicated when we get up to the top here. So because we don't want it to be too complicated here, we want to go in and I'm going to take that last purple flower off here. Just kind of didn't fit. I'm going to go in here and get ready to add in my check glass strands. So how am I adding my check glass strands? And then I pulled a really fun clasp guarding clasp that kind of matches with it. It's almost like this Lucite pearl magnetic clasp in amber. We have them in pink, we have them in purple, all different colors for that fun magnetic clasp. Hard to see there. I'm going to use that even though it looks like it's a fairly heavy necklace, which it is, there's still a great magnet on this. So I'm kind of using it to show that you can use these magnets on heavier projects too. And I'm going to open up the magnet here, which sometimes in these older clasp garden packages, it's easier said than done. I actually love when they come in the bags. Okay. So how am I going to do the back here? Basically on the sides, we have some extra thread. I'm going to start in the back and I'm actually going to be using beading wire and crimp beads. So I have some of the seven strand beading wire. And what I'm going to do is actually crimp on to take that stop bead off. And we are going to crimp on to the last bead making a loop. I'm going to then add to here and we are going to crimp on to the clasp. So you have to decide what length you want your piece to be. I'm getting out some gold crimp tubes here. And I'm going to need a total of four gold crimp tubes. Now, if you want to, you can certainly use thread and needle as well. Not a problem. And I have my stainless steel wire. I am going to take my strand here and I'm just going to cut it because I know where I need to go about six inches. And the first thing I'm going to do is crimp onto the clasp. So I have a crimp tube here. I'm going onto my clasp, going through the loop here. The clasp is nice and light also. Fold back through the crimp tube. If you want to put a gold or pink bead or anything on there, you can certainly do so. Then I'm going to grab my needle nose pliers. The magnet is going to want to stick to your pliers. Go ahead and flatten out that crimp tube, nice and flat. We're just doing a flat one. And then I'm going to cut and just keep these at random. So I'm going to cut here and just string. Once you're done stringing, however long you want your necklace to be. You can also attach to a um, lobster clasp and some chain. That way you have the option to make the necklace longer or shorter. And once I have my five or so inches of beads, again, they're a mixture and I'm just picking them up at random. Got a nice swirl to them. All right, that looks good. That's about the length, eh, maybe a couple more. That I want to do. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side then. A couple beads go on. And I know my bead mat is messy. That is the sign of genius, right? All right. So coming on here, I'm going to attach to that last bead. So I want to put on my crimp tube. And you also want to make sure your strands are secure and all of that. And I'm going to go into that last 6-0 bead. So this is kind of the beauty of the 6-0. So we're going to go into that last one and go in from either side. It doesn't matter. Wiggle it through almost like a needle. Come out the piece. Go back through your crimp tube like this. Back up through the beads. Give a nice tight pull so you don't see any extra wire here. Coming in or out, I'm going to tuck that 
wire in the end quick. Pushing it down a little bit. Once you have that done, go in with your crimp tube, flatten it out. That is it. It's a nice way to do some mixed media kind of here with different strands and different connectors. I just need to do the same thing to the other side and bracelet or necklace will be ready to go. You can also have fun doing a matching bracelet and matching earrings to this as well. Thanks so much for joining me to create this tango necklace. It's really fun for the spring floral tango to feel, put it on and feel like you want to dance. It also makes noise as you walk. It's super fun. It's reversible from the pink side to the purple side, depending on what you want it to show. And there's a lot of options if you do get that Lucite collection. Remember, if you need any materials, go ahead and look below the video in the description. We'll put links there. As always, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe because you don't want to miss anything from us here at Potomac Beats. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for more inspirational designs.